Hello there, this is Christy Lewis at the Lakeport branch of the Lake County Library and today I'm here with a very large book haul of fiction for you of multiple genres. There's some science fiction and fantasy, there's some historical, there's some more literary stuff, and this is all very exciting because the library's winter reading challenge is still going on. It's really only just begun. You have plenty of time to get in your thousand points. If you get a thousand points of reading in and you can learn about how to get those thousand points, if you click down below to the website, if you get those thousand points in, you will get a book donated in your name to the library from the friends of the library. So make sure you click that link down below and learn how you can get involved in the winter reading program. It's for all ages. It can all be done online, all the signups and everything, and there are prizes at the end. It runs through March 20th, so like I said, you have plenty of time. Make sure to check it out. Okay, without further ado, let's get into this book haul. First, we have The Garden of Promises and Lies. This is by Paula Braxton, and it's kind of sold as something that fans of Outlander and Alice Hoffman will enjoy. The series is sold as time swap romance. I don't know how much this particular book takes place in a different time, but you know, her clothing kind of suggests that it does. But from what I could tell from the cover copy, it's mostly about a girl in the modern world dealing with the consequences of her past adventures back in time, wherever she went. This is the third book in the series of The Little Shop of Found Things. So you may have heard of that. This is book three. In one of the previous books, she brought an enemy with her back from back in time, and he's very dangerous and he's causing problems in her present day life. So that's what she's dealing with in this book. So one of the quotes on the back made me like worry a little bit about this one. It has all the romance of the 17th century with a heroine who is every bit 21st, fierce, clever, and willing to put her own life on the line to rescue the man she loves. I actually found that quote a little bit offensive because I think probably women in the 17th century were every bit as fierce, clever and willing to put their lives on the line for those they love. As women in the 21st century, I don't I don't think women have changed very much in the 21st century in those ways, but you know, that's just my opinion. That doesn't necessarily mean that this book is condescending towards people of the past. I think what this quoter is trying to say is that we have a very active heroine here and it's exciting to watch her in the past where women had more constraints. If you want to check it out because cover love, am I right? <laughs> this was published in 2020 by St. Martin's Press and you can get it for free by ordering it down below. Next, let's go with a good old thriller by James Patterson and J.D. Barker. Both of these are well-known names in the thriller genre. Of course, James Patterson is. The description on here actually calls him the world's best-selling author, which I don't know about that. I, I kind of think that romance authors are probably some of the best sellers of the world, but you know, I, what do I know, right? <laughs> Regardless, this does look like fun. It's super thick because it's a large type book. We do have lots of large type books. I'm, in fact, I'm sitting right next to them here in our Lakeport branch of Lakeport Library, but in every branch we have large type books. If that's something that you need, you can also use Kindle eBooks as well, which can, you can enlarge the type on those. So just so that you know, that service is available to you. Um, this particular book, man, the cover just really grabs me. It's called The Coast to Coast Murders, a novel of psychological suspense. And this is about two siblings, Michael and Megan Fitzgerald, and they grew up with two public intellectuals as parents. And there was some kind of experimental thing happening in their household growing up. They were an Ivy League clinical psychologist and renowned psychiatrist. And I think it may have messed them up somehow. There's something going on that's weird with this family because in the next part of the summary on the back, we're following two detectives who are trying to figure out who is committing the spree of murders all across the country and guess who they're investigating? That's right, it's the Fitzgerald family. So there's something wacky going on with this family and I kind of wanna know what it is. I'm very curious about it. This is available for free on audiobook if you check out the link down below to the library website and it was published in 2020 by Little Brown and Company. We have A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is an author I've heard a lot about. You should see the print. I mean, it's like fine print to fit all the praise on the back of this book. And some of these authors, man, there's N.K. Jemison, there's Kirsten White, there's Catherine Arden, Pierce Brown, Terry Brooks, Timur Pierce. I mean, could they find somebody else who's a fantasy science fiction superstar? I don't, I can't think of any. <laughs> this sounds like good stuff, to be honest. Kirsten White calls it 
eye-meltingly brilliant. <laughs> I love that description. So anyways, I also love this cover. It's almost like an etching, like a bronze etching. This is an adult speculative fiction novel, and it's actually one of the magic school trope, but it sounds more adult and darker than like Harry Potter or some of the young adult magic schools that are series. This one sounds darker, more adult. It also sounds extremely character driven. The inside cover is written entirely in the voice of the main character. And listen to this first line. I decided that Orion Lake needed to die after the second time he saved my life. So I'm wondering if this whole book, yeah, this whole book is, it looks like it's gonna be written in the first person, so very voice, very strongly voice driven. The main character reminds me a bit of Mega Man, but may, maybe like less humorous, darker, kind of like an anti-hero like that though. So she's super angry that this Orion Lake person, who is apparently the hot guy that everybody loves, like the hero at school, he saved her life twice, now she's decided it's time for him to die. Everybody expects her to be like the evil villain of everybody's life. They just expect her to like commit mass murder to get what she wants. And she's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do what they expect me to do because I don't conform to other people's expectations of me. That's how she feels about it, except Orion. That's that's like the exception to the rule. She, she might be okay with killing him. I'm guessing that this is gonna be a series because it says lesson one of the Sholomance. The author is also well known for her uprooted spinning silver and her tamarare series so she's definitely a well-seasoned science fiction and fantasy adult author and i think also young adult maybe anyways it honestly sounds like a lot of fun and i looked on the inside and look at this beautiful aged look Ugh. it reminds me of piranesi by susanna clark which is a relatively recent release by the author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Noel. Piranesi was partially inspired by an architect with that same name, Piranesi, in our world, who created buildings that were kind of like mazes and traps and stuff like that. And there was a lot of artistry kind of like this. And that's just what it reminds me of. And I love the beautiful gold. Anyways, this was published in 2020 by Del Rey, which is an imprint of the Random Penguin. And it is available on ebook and on audiobook for free through the library website. Oh, we have Paulo Coelho. You may know Paulo Coelho, the Portuguese author, probably best known as the author of The Alchemist. Fun fact, the author was given the Guinness Book of World Record award for most translated author of the same book. So The Alchemist has been translated a lot. He's actually written quite a few books. I've read two of them. He's, he's known as a very allegorical author, but I still really enjoyed his stories, even though I could tell he was like trying to hammer home a message about the mysteries of the universe and has spirituality and stuff like that. Like that was all cool and fine, whatever. I just thought the stories were fun. They have a certain magic to them that I like. It's magical realism in some ways, but it's also, I, I just feel like it was warmer, softer, more of a focus on character than say, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. <laughs> I just read 100 Years of Solitude and I can't help comparing the two. They're going for something so, like a similar sort of feel, I feel like maybe. This one, however, sounds particularly allegorical. This one is following a young man who is seeking wisdom from a wise man named Tetsuya. The young man is there when a challenger comes to Tetsuya and tries to, I guess, like take his position or something. And the boy is watching this competition happening. The allegory, I guess, here is is all about patience and having courage and kind of embracing the unexpected challenges and changes that come to us in our lifetimes. It is available on ebook, it's translated from Portuguese, it was published in 2017 and it is now available here in America. I think maybe it wasn't available until this last year in 2020. It's pretty new to us here in America. What is next? We have another anti-hero novel, except this one is more contemporary. This sounds kind of like upmarket fiction, which if if you've never heard that term, that's where the author is aiming to appeal to a genre audience and a literary fiction audience. So they're aiming for it all. So this one sounds kind of like a thriller, but like a literary kind of thriller. And it also throws in a lot of political commentary. At least that, that's all the impression that I'm getting. The political commentary is definitely there. It sounds like it has some political messaging going on and the people on the back liked it. You know, you, you may or may not like that. I tend to not love political messaging in my books, but you know, sometimes the story can be so good that that doesn't even matter. This one does sound interesting. This is a debut author from a Chinese immigrant. Her name is Susie Yang. Oh yeah, the book is White Ivy, by the way. Well, let me tell you about what the book's about before I tell you about the author, huh? White Ivy is about a Chinese immigrant as well. 
Ivy Lin. Her story is kind of similar to a lot of like Chinese immigrants. She grows up in a low income area. She has very high expectations on her, but the similarities end there because her grandmother teaches her to shoplift. And it sounds like the story just gets darker from there. It sounds like it turns into kind of a love triangle between two men who kind of symbolize the two directions that she could choose to take her fate. And it says it will appeal to fans of the talented Mr. Ripley. And like, it sounds like most of the people who really enjoyed this just enjoyed watching Ivy, who just, she's an anti-hero that they felt they could root for. So the author, Chinese immigrant, came to the US as a child. It's really the bio that grabbed me and also the inside cover paper. Isn't that so pretty? The crane, I think that's a crane. Is that a crane? I don't know. Susie Yang, after receiving her doctorate of pharmacy from Rutgers University, she launched a tech startup in San Francisco that has taught 20,000 people how to code. Whoa. She has studied creative writing at Tin House in Sackett Street and has lived across the US, Europe, and Asia, and now resides in the UK. This is her debut. Sounds fun. Let's move on. Okay. Warlord by Bernard Cornwell. You may be aware of the Saxon Chronicle. Is it Chronicles? The Saxon series. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of books in this series. It was also the basis for the Netflix series, The Last Kingdom. So this is the finale. It's been a long time coming. I don't think Bernard Cornwell takes forever to publish books. Like I think he kind of pumps books out pretty quickly, but you know, people have been waiting a long time for this because this is a very long running series. <laughs> this is like really fast moving historical fiction. It reminds me a bit of Outlander because it's so easy to read. I've read the first one. I only read the first one. They feel very bingeable. Obviously the storyline is nothing like Outlander, but it just reminds me of that. Although these are much shorter, much heavier action, but the same strong pacing and also set in the past. So very readable historical fiction is is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so I don't want to spoil you too much on this since it's the last one in the series, but it's following a character called Uhtred who's been fighting for years and years and years to get his homeland back. And there's this other foe that's rising in nearby countries and he's conquered like three different countries, Wessex, Mercia, and East Anglia. That's King Ethelstan has conquered those things. So I think Uhtred might be trying to save Northumbria. I don't remember. It's, it's been a while since I read it, but it's a historical battle story about out a Viking. This was published in 2020 by HarperCollins. Alrighty guys, I'm just gonna do a quick flash of a few other books that we have here so that you guys can be on your way and go ahead and just order whichever ones sound interesting, which by the way, you can just copy and paste the information that I have down below. I will have the title and the author and it's perfectly formatted so that if you copy and paste it into the library catalog website, which is also linked down below, it will bring up all of the options that you have for reading this book ebooks, audiobooks, large type, books on CD. If it's there, it'll show you. And if you ever need help with downloading an ebook or an audiobook, you can always feel free to call us or watch our video that will be linked at the end of this particular video, this video, which talks about that as well. So the ministry for the future. This all I know about this. Oh, by Kim Stanley Robinson is some people on the back here think that he's brilliant. Ooh, Gene Wolf. No, Gary Wolf, <laughs> JK, I love Gene Wolf. I was like, Gene Wolf loves this? I need to read it. No, um, Gary K. Wolf at Locus, New Yorker, New York Times. So he's got some good shout outs here. This is environmental fiction about kind of a near future, not like a far dystopian future. And it's all about saving the planet. And it's pretty long. It's some kind of ecological narrative. I don't know, check it out if you're interested. <laughs> this was published by Orbit in 2020 and it is available for free as an ebook and as an audiobook through the Lake County Library website. Next, let's go with The Dark Veil vale by James Swallow. This is a Star Trek novel, Picard. I don't know if it's a novelization of previous episodes or like a brand new novel, but I know that there's like a whole universe of Star Trek books and also Star Wars books. So this is a, a really new one if you want to check it out. James Swallow is a New York Times bestselling author, so that's cool. This was published in 2021 by Gallery Books, which is an imprint of Simon & Schuster. And finally, this one looks so good. A Sky Beyond the Storm by Savage Ahir. This is a series. It's young adult fantasy. I think heavily probably romantic, but the thing that gets me is that there's gin in it. So the first book in this series is An Ember in the Ashes. So this is book four. I think it's the finale. If you're interested in starting this series, I'm absolutely positive you can get 
that series here through the library. This particular fourth book is available on ebook and audiobook for free through the library website, so probably the other ones are as well. And this was published in 2020 by Razor Bowl. <sighs> it looks so cool. I just, I mean, the heroine, look at her. She looks awesome. Yeah. That looks like a, like a sickle right there. Okay, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this new book haul. I hope some of these sound appealing to you. I hope you'll check these out. You'll check out the winter reading program. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.